This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Welcome to the channel, my name is John Cordy and uh, in these videos I try to compare gear and talk honestly about gear and if a video is sponsored I'll tell you and all that good stuff. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you want more of this sort of stuff. Now I've been involved with Psy Guitars for, for quite a while now. My first kind of proper bass that I got for gigging a couple of years back was a Sire and as a result I thought I'd like to try some of their guitars. Um, this one here is one that they actually sent to me after I'd reviewed quite a few of them and um, I guess this was their way of sort of saying thank you for whatever it was that I did for them. But um, in any case, this one here I bought, this is the Sire S3 and uh, the Sire S3 is quite a bit cheaper. This comes in at about 369 and this one 
is the S7 vintage is, is this example, um, but you know, from the S7 range, which come in around 500 pounds. Now there are some key differences that you'll note. First of all will be the lack of roasted maple on this particular S3. So one of my questions about why roasted maple even became a fad, I'm guessing, this is guesswork, that it is quicker to roast it than it is to buy more mature, drier, normal maple, right? So I, I imagine that especially on these cheaper end guitars that the reason that the roasted maple is used is because presumably you can get it more stable quicker and for cheaper if you roast it i imagine i can't imagine it's all because it's higher quality wood or anything like that so that's one key difference the other key difference is that we've got a ro uh, rosewood board on the s3 versus the roasted maple board on the s7 which does also have like a glossy finish which is a bit strange because the back of the neck is satin i've talked about that before so you do kind of solve that issue with the rosewood it i say issue it's a bit of a strange design choice i think but under the fingers it feels great so it's not like a negative um this has the kind of uh fake abalone inlays this has kind of just ivory dots presumably you know some sort of plastic and then one other difference that i noticed was that the pickup selector on this one looks a bit more substantial than on the S3. And then we come to one other key difference. There's locking tuners on the S7 and on the S3 there's not, but the tuning stability didn't suffer for that. I did in my first kind of video with the S3, quite an extensive um, sort of tremolo bashing and it was absolutely fine. This one has the vintage saddles on it because it's the vintage model. This one has the kind of normal. Um, the trem blocks are subtly different as well. So I don't know if that's another area that they've managed to, to make some savings. But yeah, key differences, uh, the lack of the roasted, um, a different pickup selector, a different trem block by the looks of things and lack of locking tuners. But also one key difference that I noticed was that the pickups on the S3 are substantially hotter. Um, now the pickups are different across these guitars as well. And I don't know if there might be a difference that these are Alnico or something like that, but either way, I don't know if you heard it in the introduction there, but this is pushing the uh, Amplitude Tonex way harder than the, the S7 pickup. So that for me is quite a big difference as well. Now, in terms of playability, I put them both very much in the same space because to me it feels very much like you're playing the guitar made by the same kind of people to the same sorts of standards. And generally with size, I found this to be very good. It's, it's been my experience of it and that's what I've shared with you guys. The one area that I do think there might be a slight dip in quality is kind of finishing around sort of tooling marks and um, little bits and pieces of imperfections, but I wouldn't be surprised to see one of those on the S7 either. I've had a, a few examples of these and they're not all necessarily perfect. I think that's, they get the playability really spot on, but there are sometimes, you know, little marks and stuff. But for this price range, for me, I think that's kind of what you'd possibly expect. You wouldn't necessarily expect this level of playability and equally I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be perfect workmanship. It does have really good playability. The workmanship is not perfect. Around things that don't matter so much to me, you know, if I was paying £2,000 for a guitar and it turned up with, you know, little scrapes and bumps and stuff and little tooling marks on the fretboard, then I'd be a bit disappointed. But in this case, I think you probably go into buying a Sire with some reasonable expectations that a guitar that costs sort of sub £500 is not gonna be necessarily amazing. Amazing in terms of, you know, perfect workmanship is what I mean by that. I think at this price range as well, you could consider sort of Harley Benton or Jet guitars. I've not really tried many of them, but you do hear good things about them. I think you do occasionally read about a lemon coming from the factory um, and people, obviously these are shipping across the world and uh, things like Fret Sprout, 
maybe happen to a few people. Again, leave your comments in the comments if you've got any experience with side guitars that was positive or not positive. But, you know, David Beebe asked me today, um, you know, is there a dip in quality? And I'd say not really, no. Um, where they're finding the savings, I think is just using slightly cheaper parts, whether that tremolo is slightly cheaper, whether the pickups are cheaper, I'd suggest they probably are. And, you know, whether some of the, the pickup selector might be cheaper and they're not roasting this maple. Yeah, and not having the locking tuners. That is, I think, where they're making the savings, not on the things that matter so much, like the actual quality of the guitar and playability. So that's a good thing. I think I marginally prefer the finishing of the S3s as well, as in like the choices that they made. Sonic Blue to me is one of the coolest colours and I prefer having a rosewood neck as well. So in some ways, I think I'd even prefer the S3 specs to the S7 and that's pretty cool. I think that they've come out with something so competitively priced, but still with really kind of the, the things that I liked about Sire. I think the neck shapes are the same, I think. Um, difficult to tell, but I think that would be the case. It wouldn't make sense, I guess, to have a totally different neck shape. Um, and I'd suggest that maybe the pickups in both examples might be your first thing that you might upgrade if you were thinking about uh, going for something anyway. So that might be an area where you have the S7 for a while and you think, well, I want to change out the pickups. Well, in that case, the S3, for me, if you're going to change out the pickups, this suits me a bit better having the Rosewood fretboard. So for me, I think, yeah, I would recommend either or, but the S3, don't buy it thinking that this is a, a, a much worse quality guitar or they've cut corners here. I think the corners that they have cut are the ones that you want them to, you know, so whether it's things like the pickups, etc. Um, so yeah, a, a really good guitar as well. Out of the box, it came and played in tune and um, tuning stability on it has been great. Uh, so same side quality, few little negatives around sort of little bits of sloppy finishing, but nothing major. After all, this isn't a £2,000 American vintage. I'll see you in another video soon. Let me know if you've got any other questions in the comments. But those are, I think, really good value guitars. Um, I paid for this with my own money, £369 from Andertons, and I can honestly say that's a great guitar for the money.